Electromagnetic radiation is a wave, and we have talked about waves before back in 201. So a lot of the concepts from there can be applied here. So when you have a wave, there are several critical properties of a wave that can describe that wave. So remember, an electromagnetic wave is formed from an oscillating electric field that induces an oscillating magnetic field that uh, then induces an oscillating electric field, and so on. The first property that uh, helps us define a wave is the frequency. The frequency is how many times the wave oscillates per second. So this is how many times the wave does a full cycle from uh, peak to peak or trough to trough in one second. So the units of frequency is one over seconds or inverse seconds or the other unit is uh, hertz, H-E-R-T-Z. Uh, Another uh, measure of the wave is the uh, wavelength. This is the distance from one peak to the next or one trough to the next trough. So the wavelength is a distance. So it's going to be me measured in meters or some uh, unit of uh, meters. An electromagnetic wave, uh, well, the third key property of the wave is the velocity of the wave. So in a vacuum, the uh, speed of an electromagnetic wave is the speed of light. So this is uh, denoted by the letter C, and it's about 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. This is true for all types of electromagnetic radiation, so our radio waves, microwaves, gamma rays, um, light, uh, they all move at that same speed in a vacuum. For comparison, the speed of sound is 344 meters per second, so the uh, speed of light is about a million times faster than sound. That's why you see a flash of lightning uh, much faster than you uh, uh, hear a boom of thunder. The sound uh, doesn't move nearly as fast as uh, light. The uh, light travels from the Earth to the moon, so that takes about one second. So when it takes about eight minutes for light to travel from the sun to the Earth, so for uh, a decent amount of travel times, you really need to start to talk about uh, astronomical objects. You should notice that the uh, wavelength is the distance traveled for each oscillation, and the frequency is the number of oscillations per second. So the frequency times the wavelength is the velocity. So uh, visible light, the uh, best known form of electromagnetic radiation, has a wavelength of uh, 400 nanometers to 750 nanometers. So uh, pretty small uh, wavelengths. So next we want to think about the relationship between frequency and wavelength. So uh, the wavelength is the distance between the peaks. Uh, so we could uh, measure uh, from trough to trough or peak to peak. Uh, either way, uh, if we measure that distance in meters or whatever length unit we want, that's going to be a distance. The frequency, so the uh, talic F, is the number of oscillations that occur per a unit time, so usually uh, one second. So if you were standing in the ocean and you were counting the number of waves that hit you for a certain period of time, that would be the frequency. So the more waves that hit you, uh, the larger the frequency. On the other hand, uh, the wavelength, that would be the distance between the waves. If the waves are spaced closely together, the wavelength would be small, and if they were far apart, then the wavelength would be large. If we think about this, the wavelength is the distance between the waves, and the frequency is how many waves hit per time, so if we take the frequency times the wavelength, that's going to be equal to the speed of the wave. In electromagnetic radiation, uh, this speed is a constant, it is the uh, speed of light, so uh, 3 times 10 to the 8 uh, meters per second. So that means the uh, frequency and the wavelength are inversely proportional to each other. So uh, the larger the wavelength, the smaller the frequency, and the smaller the wavelength, the larger the frequency. It should be noted that the uh, energy of the electromagnetic radiation is proportional to the frequency. So the higher the frequency, the higher the energy of the electromagnetic radiation. So the energy is uh, inversely proportional to the wavelength. So next we want to look at the amplitude. This is another property of all waves, and it corresponds to the height of the peaks. So for a water wave, the higher the wave, the larger the amplitude. Uh, for a sound wave, the louder the sound, then the larger the amplitude. Notice with sound, it's a compressive wave, uh, but the idea is sort of similar. The idea of sound, the wave is actually made up of changes in pressure in the air, so uh, the sound wave moves in a straight line. Uh, what's changing is the pressure of the air. The pressure oscillates, and so, you know, when it hits your eardrum, uh, if it's at high pressure, then it pushes your eardrum in, and if it's at uh, low uh, pressure, then your eardrum is sort of pushed out. So basically, it causes your eardrum to vibrate, and then your uh, brain can process those vibrations, and you can uh, turn that into sound, or at least something that you can process as sound. In the case of light, 
uh, the wave also does not move up and down, right? Uh, don't think of it as uh, uh, an actual oscillation of the wave itself. Rather, it's the electric field that is oscillating. So the light is moving in a dead straight line. It doesn't uh, bounce up and down like a water wave. It's that field strength in the, uh, the electric field and the magnetic field that are changing. So the intensity is the strength of the electric field in the electromagnetic wave, and that corresponds to the amplitude. So basically, the brighter the light, the larger the intensity. So here we have a quick long kappa question to answer. And here we watch the uh, amplitude by uh, checking the height of the peaks, right? The higher the peak, the higher the amplitude. The lower the peak, the lower the amplitude. And then we uh, figure out how the frequency is changing by looking at how often the wave oscillates. So the closer together the peaks, the higher the frequency. And the further apart they are, then the lower the frequency. All right, so we have one um, more quick question to do. Uh, we want to know what is the frequency of violet light. So violet light uh, has a wavelength of about 400 nanometers, and we know that the speed of light is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second, so we can then use this to solve for the frequency. So the velocity of a wave, so in this case c, the speed of light, is equal to the frequency of the uh, light times the wavelength. So if we want to solve for this, we find that the frequency is equal to the speed of light uh, divided by uh, lambda, the wavelength. So we plug this in, and we find that this frequency is 3 times 10 to the 8 uh, meters per second. And then we divide that by 400 times 10 to the minus 9, which is our uh, wavelength in uh, nanometers. So um, we put that together. And we find that the uh, frequency here is a 7.49 times 10 to the 14 uh, inverse seconds. And the unit for inverse seconds is uh, hertz, so the number of oscillations per second. So that's that hz there. So uh, in one second, the uh, light travels 300 million meters, right? And it oscillates every 400 nanometers. So yeah, the number of times it, uh, it oscillates uh, needs to be a pretty crazy big number. Uh, also, I guess I should point out that on this slide, the speed of light is listed at uh, 2.99792458 times 10 to the 8th uh, meters per second. I always wondered why whoever made this slide used all those digits. It's kind of a false accuracy since we're just estimating violet light to be about 400 nanometers. I got this slide from Mr. Scrub, but I don't think he made this either. I don't know where he got it from. Anyhow, uh, 3 times 10 to the 8 is uh, good enough for us. Okay, so you have some questions to do, so uh, good luck with that, and next we're going to take a look at the electromagnetic spectrum.